My next guest uh, said he was blown away by the speech. Uh, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich uh, joins us now. Uh, so, Speaker Gingrich, uh, all right, you're blown away. What was so good about it? Well, I thought that it was a, first of all, very well put together speech that covered an amazing amount of ground. I thought that he was very unifying. He delivered it in a very serious presidential way. Uh, he had very powerful emotional high points, uh, in particular uh, when for over two minutes we applauded the widow of a U.S. Navy SEAL who had died in the service of his country. Uh, but, in addition, but he also reached out to the Democrats in some significant ways. And I think they're going to have a, you know, many of them are never going to respond. I understand that. But a lot of them are going to actually have a pretty serious challenge here because they've got uh, a president who is prepared to uh, really ask them to come and work with him. And I think the country would like them to do that. Is um, Were you surprised that he... Uh... President Trump, who is given to uh, interrupting himself with, um, you know, uh, digressions or embe embellishments of his speech, he appeared not to do that uh, at all last night. If maybe one or two times he, he added another word or phrase. Uh, but this was a speech in which he clearly s stuck to a speech he was prepared to give and, and wasn't going to change it on the fly. Yeah, I, th I think it was very impressive, and I think that he clearly um, had put a lot of time into it. I understand that as late as yesterday afternoon, uh, he was sitting there with uh, the text uh, you know, printed out, going through, marking, changing, adapting, uh, and that he actually practiced all the way up in the car, uh, because I think he knew this is the biggest single moment since uh, the inauguration. I mean... No speech since the inaugural mattered the way this does. Had a huge audience, uh, and apparently set a record on Twitter, uh, beating Obama's earlier record of just the number of people who were tweeting about it. Huge number of people on Facebook. So this was a this was a magic moment. You you can't recreate moments like this very easily. And I think as a result, um, President Trump wanted to make sure that he met the standard that was appropriate for you know somebody who. Uh, wants to lead the whole country. And I thought, actually, he did a pretty good job trying to bring people together. Well, they certainly resisted. Uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi called it a bait and switch. Uh, Chuck Schumer, it seems to be a common line among the Democrats, say, uh, said that he says one thing and governs another way. Uh, Michael Moore accused him of grandstanding uh, with the widow uh, Don Lemon said he was speaking words he didn't actually understand. I mean, it's just an avalanche of this kind of uh, bitterness coming from the other side. It doesn't sound like they're going to come around. Well, it depends on who they are. I, look, I think a third of the Democratic Party will ultimately work with Trump. A third will be afraid to work with Trump. And a third will actively hate him. Uh, that's just a reality. Trump represents a, a conservative populism which is the end of the world for people like Nancy Pelosi. Uh, and I think that you're going to have uh, that kind of uh, contention, and there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to relax and, and focus on what you can get done. But I thought that he did a good job last night of bringing the country together, uh, and that's an enormously important first step. All right. Would you? Okay, so just as an example of that, um, I, I'm sure you noticed Van Jones, uh, not a Trump fan by any means, uh, saying – uh, that he became president of the United States with that speech, and particularly the moment with the uh, widow of the of the uh, SEAL Team Six member who uh, w who died in that Yemen raid, uh, is is that a, an indicator that maybe some of these liberals will come around? Well, that was certainly a sign that that at least with Van Jones, that a real breakthrough had been made. Now. I'm, I'm told that Van is getting uh, beaten up pretty badly on the left because what he said was, of course, impermissible. How can how can you suggest anything positive about Donald J. Trump if you're a true liberal? And so I think that in that sense, Van's probably paying a pretty real price right now uh, for having told what he thought was the truth. Uh, well, I mean, he wasn't the only one to make that observation, um, and certainly there were conservatives who did, but uh, – that it, it it is interesting that people do think that one speech sort of 
cemented his status that he achieved with the election, the inauguration, that he's president of the United States. Well, I, I don't know that by itself it's a minute, but it, it was such a powerful speech. It was delivered so well. His tone was, was so strong that I think it all came together in a way that, that uh, was very compelling and that made uh, lots of average, everyday Americans think, you know, uh, I feel pretty comfortable with this guy as, as uh, my president, and that's a big step forward. I mean, I, I think that he certainly is stronger today than he was yesterday because of the power and the effectiveness of that speech. Okay, so do you think that because you know the guy, uh, he he is obviously being praised in a lot of quarters for the speech. Do you think this changes his mind about how he? speaks in public at all well i mean i i think you know he set out to achieve uh a certain uh standard with that speech and uh it was different than any other speech he had given he, he understood that that was going to be different uh and i think that uh, what you had there was somebody who um consciously developed a a substantive, emotional, bringing us together, delivered softly, very deliberately, I think, delivered softly uh, kind of speech. And I think all of those components worked remarkably well. And I think people left the room and people at home, you know, left their television set thinking, you know, there's a lot more to this guy than I thought. Okay, and that may so be the most you can hope for in that, that, that first bite. Okay, so the, you know the Republicans are having a hard time agreeing on exactly how to uh, restart what was called Obamacare and and fix the problems and keep the good things and so forth. How does this the power of his performance last night help him wrangle those Republicans? No, he just look. He just has more. For, first of all, no, nobody can automatically get anything done. It's not the way the American system operates. But he certainly has more prestige, and when he walks in a room right now, he is a bigger, more powerful figure than he was um, not very long, you know, the day before yesterday. And so that gives you a negotiating capacity that's very real and that uh, allows you to do things uh, and, for example, sitting down with members who aren't happy, listening to them, and trying to solve their problems. Well, that's, you know, that, that's a significant part of the job of of, uh, of a president, and he has a greater range of capability today to do that than he did yesterday. I mean, that that's the real meaning of that breakthrough. Uh, you once said that uh, I'll make this the last thing. I appreciate your time, but you once said that you wanted to be an advisor to this president on how to reinvent the American government. Uh, you still got your fingers in that pie? Oh, yeah, every day, seven days a week. Right. Uh, it's a huge challenge. Uh, he, and if you look at his speech last night in that sense, it really lays out a bold, daring strategy of doing a lot of things that uh, are going to keep all of us very busy. And I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with how he's coming down the road with what he's doing. I think it is truly historic, and I think it's going to make an enormous difference. Speaker of the House, uh, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I thank you again for your time, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again real soon, hopefully. Look forward to it.